Hi. So last time I showcased to you all the steps I took in order to start my new chlorella algae culture, which is bubbling there right behind me. In that video, I talked through all of the, the steps I took, as well as mentioned some mistakes I made in the past and how I accounted for them. Today, I wanted to take a bit more of a deep dive into the whole purpose of this, which is to create an algae to fuel process, something that would prove very valuable for things like biofuels. And that's going to be the topic of this episode of doing it ourselves. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So in order to make fuel from algae, you first need some algae. And in order to get some algae, you need to cultivate it. I started this culture a week ago and it has already gotten quite mature. It's gone from a clear, almost transparent uh, color in the medium to a deep, vibrant green. And that indicates that there has been rapid growth, uh, exponential growth over these past few days, and that my culture, at least for the time being, is quite healthy. And if I want to keep it that way, I need to do a few TLC things, like regularly checking the pH, and regularly fertilizing the culture medium. When growing algae, and this is true for multiple different strains of it, there are different stages of the growth cycle that you need to be aware of if you want to grow some. To start, you won't get much growth in the initial first couple of days, as what's happening is the algae from the starter culture is acclimating to the environment of the culture medium, and it needs time to adjust to that. Once the algae has acclimated to its medium and assuming there are enough nutrients in the medium to support growth, it then begins growing exponentially, doubling perhaps even every 24 hours or so. During this exponential growth phase, the algae will grow super duper quick. In a few days, much like mine, you can go from an almost transparent culture with a greenish hue to a deep green culture that's almost opaque and that can happen in a very short time frame. Now if you're not interested in fuels you can basically stop here and go forward and start harvesting the algae because lipids aren't really a concern for you. However for things like biofuels lipids can be important because they provide those linear hydrocarbon chains that make up most commercial fuels today. Now after a while, once the culture has started to mature, and I think mine is almost, well, probably about three quarters of the way there, the growth rate will start to slow down significantly. Now, as I said before, this would usually be the time when you would harvest and start a new culture if you're using the algae for things like foodstuffs or fertilizers and such. However, for biofuels, there is an extra step to take in order to make the production of fuel from this algae a lot more efficient and a lot easier. Essentially, by default, even high lipid content strains like chlorella only have around in between 10 to 40 percent uh, lipids. However, using a variety of stress techniques, you can ever so slightly stress the algae and a common stress response for things like chlorella is under stress, they begin to store additional mass as lipids rather than devoting energy solely to cell replication. And we could take advantage of this to increase the lipid yield of our chlorella algae. A common way to induce this stress, and this is backed up by a scientific paper, is to deprive the algae of nitrogen. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to stop fertilizing, stop adding nitrogen sources that are easily bioavailable to the algae itself. When you deprive the algae of nitrogen, it stops 
synthesizing proteins and it also gets a little bit stressed and so it will also accumulate mass as lipids rather than divide and replicate itself. This is called the lipid accumulation phase and if you're going to do this yourself, before you do this, this is the point where you would take a starter culture, a new starter culture inside a container to use for a new culture. And then the rest of the algae in the culture medium would progress forth into the lipid accumulation phase. Now in terms of things like enhancing growth, growth efficiency, stuff like that, that is something I am still researching. But I am bound to do some research and development and create content for those kind of things in the future. But for now, the growth aspect is basically have a algae culture and keep it healthy and keep it growing until I want the lipids from it and then take a culture, a new starter culture, and then allow the rest of the, the culture medium to accumulate lipids ready for harvest. Speaking of harvesting, algae. It's not like harvesting a plant where you can just pick it out of the ground and so on and so forth. With things like microalgae, it's tons and tons of tiny little cells that are dispersed in an aqueous medium. In order to harvest it, you need to get those cells out of that water. And there are various ways of doing this which I will again explore further. But the two main ways are filtration and dehydration. Filtration, whether it's gravity filtration or vacuum filtration or whatnot, essentially just involves straight up filtering the culture medium until you get all of the algae out. And the residue that's left will just be the wastewater. Now, gravity filtration is long and boring and vacuum filtration may turn out to be more difficult than it may seem at first glance and this is because the algae whether it be spirulina or chlorella or whatnot they are very tiny and they can clog things like glass frits and filter papers and that can make it very difficult for things like vacuum pumps to pull the water through, leaving you behind some nice, clean, dry algae. The alternative method is dehydration, and it's something I intend to explore. Essentially, it involves placing a small plastic tub inside of a dehydrator and pouring a small amount of the culture medium into it at a time and using the dehydrator to evaporate the water and to continue doing this until the solid algae biomass accumulates in the container. The upside to this is there are absolutely no losses. You won't get anything uh, lost in cotton buds or filter paper or anything like that. The downside is that, it, once again, it's long and you'll need to probably wash the algae with water and dehydrate it again or filter it because it will still be contaminated with leftover residual fertilizers and whatnot. But I will explore both filtration and dehydration in the future as methods of harvesting my algae. Once I have my algae, I can do one of two things. As is, I can pyrolyze it and turn it into various different types of fuels that can be derived from the product of that pyrolysis, which will be something called bio-crude or algal crude oil. And this is very chemically similar to the stuff that's found deep in the ground. The advantage of this is that it makes use of the whole biomass. And because you're using the whole of the biomass, not just one component, producing fuels this way is more calorie efficient in terms of algae. However, pyrolysis oil derived from algae or an and even other things like waste plastics requires additional processing. And it overall, it's kind of a dirtier process overall because you have to deal with residues like biochar. You get hydrocarbon gas emissions, which are a pollutant. And just in general, there's a lot more waste management involved. Not to mention that pyrolysis can involve quite harsh uh, reaction conditions. And so in order to do pyrolysis, I would need to have a reactor that's capable 
of handling those conditions, namely high temperature and high pressure, which are required for efficient conversion into pyrolysis oil. The alternative to this, and the reason why I want to maximize the lipid yield as much as possible, is I want to turn the lipids from algae into a biodiesel. And you can do that via various different, different methods, but the, the traditional method of making a biodiesel is to carry out something called transesterification, which converts the raw lipids into a more combustible and easier flowing form with the help of an alcohol like methanol or ethanol. This is a much cleaner process than pyrolysis typically. However, transesterification is quite a long process. It takes multiple hours for the reaction to complete and then you need to do work up on top of that. And other things to consider are that you need the, if you're going with transesterification in particular, you need the additional input of an alcohol to serve as a secondary reactant. With things like biodiesel, you also have to consider the fact that you need to extract the lipids from the algae in order to use those lipids as a feedstock. But again, for both pyrolysis oil and biodiesel, I will explore both of them in the future with pyrolysis oil, probably at a very small scale for safety reasons. But for things like biodiesel, I've made biodiesel in the past. And so once I have the lipids extracted from my algae, it should be pretty easy to convert them into fuel. Now the process I've outlined just now isn't going to be efficient at all. That's not my intent at this stage. My intent is just to get the process working. The lighting setup I have there for my chlorella culture combined with the pump that it's using far outstrip the energy I would get from converting the algae into biodiesel. But believe me, there is tons of room for improvement in the energy efficiency department when it comes to growing algae. And I'm sure there are improvements I will think of along the way at each step of the process to make it better and more efficient. But right now, I just want to get a proof of concept working and then after that, I will deal with the efficiency. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching me outline the various steps I plan to take in my algae to fuel process. If you want to see more updates on how things go, and if you're also interested in what other stuff my channel has to offer, then why not click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Give us a like, let me know what you think down in the comments. Take care, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.